And so, in all problems of strategy, I'm merely laying down some, or describing, certain very general principles which have to be borne in mind when one contemplates the possibility of obliterating an enemy. That may not be wise strategy to do that. And you have to think beyond the narrow sphere of war into the wider sphere of politics and economics. What do you expect to achieve as a result of this? Do you expect to retire simply with your honor intact but everything else blown to bits? Is that what you want? Or uh, do you want to possess uh, this other uh, nation's property and uh, women and uh, fields and uh, minerals and so on, works of art? Uh, what do you want to achieve? And then afterwards, do you want to rule this people? Do you want them to rule themselves? Uh, or do you really want them to rule themselves? Or uh, do you want them to um, rule themselves with, uh, by electing people whom you approve of? Uh, do you want the responsibility of feeding them for a long time? Because you probably have to do that if you defeat them. You blow the place to bits, and then you have to rehabilitate it. Do you want to do that? Do you want to institute a police system to keep them uh, well behaved? Uh, what do you want to do? You, you, you have to say, well, now we want these people to be self-governing. Only provided they don't vote communist. <laughs> you know, we want you to be self-governing our way. <laughs> so, uh, but, you, but when you think all this through, see, and you, you, you find out what's involved in the long run, then you may say, well, it's not worth a war. If war is an instrument of politics, 